One of the characteristics of object orientation programming is inheritance, and it supports the ability to extend certain attributes from a superclass to a lower class. Java supports single inheritance. The idea here is to provide a feature in one superclass and then overwrite that is in the subclass that can allow us to reuse code from a superclass. Inheritance is probably one of the main features used in industry nowadays because you don't want to start anything from scratch. You want to reuse code and not only that, adopt it in a consistent and coherent way. We're going to introduce two keywords, extends and super, that they only takes place in the inheritance stage in object-oriented. The keyword extends permits to link the class to a superclass, whereas the keyword super invokes superclass fields or methods or other attributes as long as they're not private. As you probably remember, the relationship that we have in inheritance, we must have a superclass and a subclass. The feature here is that the subclass inherits attributes from the superclass, and we denote it in a UML diagram by using this arrow. Remember that inheritance is considered to be is a relationship. What does that mean? For example, when you have a superclass course, we might have two types of courses, a face-to-face -face or an online class. This extension will say a face-to-face -face course is a course, but we can also have this hierarchy when we can have an online course that is also a course. So now you have this family, face-to-face -face course and online course, that they both extend the attributes of a course. This is called is a relationship. In our example, we're going to have our superclass robot, but we're going to extend it to a different feature. We're going to create a more sophisticated robot called a drone. A drone is a robot, but also has more features. But how can we know it's a robot? Because a drone moves to the left, to the right, to the north, to the south. Those are attributes that we have from the robot. But not only that, a drone has this ability to fly. So we can extend our notion of robot through a drone by using inheritance. It means that drone will now take place in this hierarchy in Java that we already know. In other words, drone will inherit all the attributes from robot, but robot will inherit all the attributes from our class object. Now we have this hierarchy that we have established by using extends. When you define a class drone, the word extends must be right before the superclass that we're going to inherit. In this case, it will be robot. Extends will permit this contract that will allow us to basically say, hey, I will inherit everything comes from robot. I am drone. Notice that we have a field on line two called Z, which will represent the actual attribute that makes this class drone unique. But what happened to X and Y? Those are attributes that come from robot and we will inherit. Thanks for the word extends. Z, in this case, will represent the altitude and is what's going to make the drone unique. Notice that we have also constructors. Friendly reminder, our constructor is are responsible to initialize all the fields. The constructor that we have in line four corresponds to the non-argument constructor. The one on line eight is a customized constructor. The one on line four doesn't take any parameters, so it will create just a very basic default drone. Whereas the one on line eight, it will contain x, y, the distance, but also the altitude. Notice that we have the keyword super. The keyword super must be the very first line after we define the constructor. Super invokes the superclass methods or constructors, and it basically tells the superclass that we're going to use those constructors in this class. Notice that on line five, we're using the super constructor or the default constructor on robot, and on line nine, we're using the super constructor for the customized constructor, the one that takes three parameters. After you execute that, you must initialize the remaining fields. In this case, we'll initialize z to 0 because it's an int, as you can see in line 2. But also, we're going to initialize 10 with the parameter value by using the proper this.z gets the parameter z. How about getters and setters? Every good practice must include them as well. We're going to include get z, which will give us the altitude in this class, where a set z will give us a parameter and you initialize it with the this.z accordingly. 
we probably need more methods or functionalities. We're going to have move up and move down, which means that we need to navigate through the Z coordinate, the altitude. So move up, basically increase the coordinate Z, or move down, will decrease this, as it shows in line 19 and line 25. We also need to update our distance. We will use a temporary variable called D in order to set the distance. Once we obtain it, we can increase it in both methods and then set it by using the setter, set distance. This implementation of drone basically inherits all the attributes from robot, and most of this method must have a different type of encapsulation. That is why, for example, set Z, move up, move down, they're all protected. And the reason why is because we're going to have a collaboration or a consultation between robot and drone. This will allow us to keep the integrity of our fields consistent with the contract that we want to implement. And not only that, it will allow us to extend to a drone and use them in this class. And nobody should be able to touch the fields, for example, X, Y, and distance. If we go back to the two string, we will allow us to override the two string that we inherit from an ancestor. Notice here that on line 30, we still have the same name of the header, public string to string. That doesn't have to change. This is for the reason we override our inherited attributes, in this case, two string. Remember that we inherit two string not only from our parent robot, but also from an ancestor or grandma or grandpa called object. Once you declare public string to String, you overwrite whatever you inherit from your ancestors. Notice that you can still use the one from the superclass as is described here. Super dot two string will invoke the superclass two string. Let's see how this takes place in the inheritance hierarchy. Drone inherits the two string from the robot, but also once you inherit, we can override it by creating the two string. In similar fashion, robot inherited the two string from an object, but that two string was not very helpful because it contains that hexadecimal address location where the robot was going to be located. So that's why robot decide to overwrite. Here, we're invoking our ancestor. In this case, our parents' robot. Super2 string will call the superclass from robot and will give us the output that we expect. We use the power of concatenation to make this two string unique. That's why we provide aerial to provide a feedback that we're dealing with the drone. Finally, we concatenate also the Z coordinate to whatever the two string from our ancestor will be. And it makes a lot of sense because it will report X, Y, and now the Z. As you probably remember, this will take place first by robot inherit the two string from object and override the two string. Finally, the drone will override the two string coming from the robot. So when we run it, when we create the robot, this is what we got from the object to string. When we override it, we got something more fancier when we got the distance, the X, and the Y. But when we overwrite the two string from drone, the same image that you see right now from line 30 to 32, now that we also not only overwrite the two string from our ancestor robot, but also will concatenate aerial distance, we inherit the two string, which is distance x, y, and at the end we concatenate the z. This is very powerful. As a matter of fact, if you create your Java DOB, it will generate the following thing. You can see here in the square that will demonstrate that we have a hierarchy already. Notice that object has a child, robot, and robot has a child, drone. So now you can see how Java DOB, when you create a Java documentation, it will recognize this hierarchy automatically. When we see the methods, it will not only generate the get Z and set Z, but notice how we inherit also some attributes from robot. Notice that here we describe that there is a couple of items here that we inherit from the class robot. This includes get distance, get X, get Y, move the east, move north, south, west, print info, set distance, set X, and set Y. These are inherited from the class robot. And not only that, it will provide us also a description which one we inherit from the class object. We can tell right away that we don't have anymore the two string. As a matter of fact, robot doesn't have the two string. It got over in the class drone. How about we want to prevent this process? There's a process to inherit this flow of inheritance. And this is by using the keyword final. The keyword final will prevent that future extensions of this instance will take advantage of overriding 
It is simple. In the class robot, we need to include the keyword final just after the encapsulation public and just before the return type, in this case, string. This will prevent that elements like, for example, drone will extend the inheritance. When we create our instance in our main, we will create a drone and then we'll interact with the computer user as the simulated version of how many distance you would like to run it. Suppose that you reach 20, you can move north, south, east, west, up or down based on the description. This line six will basically create the interaction with the computer user and extract the command. Or in line seven, we'll extract the command from the computer user and store it in a string. The rest is just a multiple option, how we want to move through those directions. It's a decision maker based on the computer user's input. On line 29, it will print the current state of the drone. Notice that the two string is not included, but that will include the entire description. And this is one of the perks that we got once we inherit the two string.